Hey now everyone, Matt here from the SWTS, just letting you know we're about to enter some spoiler territory for Bad Batch S3E9, the Harbinger. Spoilers! We all knew she'd be coming this season, but my goodness was it a treat to see Asajj Ventress back in action, and I have to say she's even better than before in her new resurrected form. This character in her new form just oozes radness and Star Wars character excellence. She looks even cooler than before, sounds even cooler than before, and is just flat out ice cold. Cool! You can't deny it, especially after she reminded us of how skilled of a warrior she is while making short work out of some of the finest clones the Grand Republic has ever cooked up. Her interactions with Omega were meaningful and purposeful, and showed that she has grown into a much more fleshed out character than just a badass Sith assassin. And I truly believe she wants the best for Omega and the clones, even if she's not entirely sure why the Empire is after the tiny clone in the first place. The shroud of secrecy she wove while trying to explain that she's Omega's best option to be trained if Omega indeed has a high M count, not only keeps fans guessing why exactly Omega's blood can accept an M count transfer while other clones can't, but it also teases the potential of a new series if Omega does indeed end up with Asajj for force training or due to her brothers all being killed. I just appreciate that Asajj, like us, sort of gets why Omega is being hunted, but ultimately doesn't know the real reason of her being needed for Palpatine's necromancer. She believes, like the other M-Count bounties, that Omega may be Force-sensitive, but she doesn't know that Hemlock is truly after her because her blood can accept the transfer of midichlorians themselves into a clone vessel. It's an interesting dynamic, and one that hopefully gets resolved with crystal clear resolution by the time the series ends. I will say though, if it weren't for Asajj, this would have been this season's Pabu episode, so luckily the space babe showed up. Outside of her just oozing Star Wars awesome, she was also our only slight touch in on the Empire narrative this week, while also shedding a sliver of light on Omega's force potential, furthering that mystery just a bit more. So yeah, this episode was Asajj all the way. In terms of top moments, Miss Ventress is involved in them all, big surprise. Let's start with her throwdown with Clone Force 99. I mean, she just mops the floor with them, using a bit of force karate and barely breaking a sweat. It showed just how dangerous she is, as well as how powerful a trained force user can be, even against other highly skilled warriors. The best part may have been the end when Omega comes back all thrilled with herself to find the adults in a state of chaos with her new friend having bested her family with ease. I also found the Varathian encounter to be a standout scene, not so much for the fight and the monster of the week aspects, but more for the fact that it highlighted how much Asaz has changed from her past days of being a Sith assassin. Rather than trying to kill the monster, she uses the force to communicate with it and calm it. This is a 180 from who she was before, so it was a great way to remind everyone that this kick-ass looking chick also has a bit of a heart these days. Finally, the ominous end where Asajj makes it as clear as mud that Omega may or may not be a force sensitive was a nice touch on this season's overarching thread of why exactly Omega's blood can accept midichlorians while no other clones can. While it's still not clear at all on why Omega's blood can do this in the first place, it provided some insights into her possible future and abilities. I just appreciate that Asajj left the door open on Omega being viable for force training or not, and that if she truly is, she will have to leave her bros to train with Asajj, which quite frankly could become a new series itself, or a viable way to continue both Omega and Asajj's stories moving forward. And as far as eggs and references go, this episode was pretty bleak. I guess we can highlight that Nika Futterman is back voicing Asajj? who is also back, so there's that. We did hear midichlorian for the first time instead of just M-count, so you can count that one as well. And Asajj's line about having a few lives left is a nod to the fact that she died in Dark Disciple, but has now returned. And uh, don't plan on getting that tale told in Bad Batch either, so hopefully this episode was a backdoor pilot for a new series starring the White Lady. 
Hey, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, comment, and share. And if you like what you hear here, make sure to tune into the Star Wars Time Show live stream every Wednesday, 5 p.m. East, youtube.com slash Star Wars Time Show. There's always time for Star Wars Time. And if you listen to the Star Wars Time Show, the Force will be with you always.